Greetings, Legionnaires, and welcome to another Critical Intelligence show where we kind of talk about information, but also some of my biased, subjective thoughts on a game that's coming up. And this one is something I've been waiting a couple of years for. It's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, or basically Ghost Recon Wildlands 2. Pretty much what I'm going to do here today is talk about the big kind of key points that we're getting so far from the information that Ubisoft has dropped upon us and also give some of my thoughts on it as well because I was planning on making a wish list for Ghost Recon Wildlands 2. I gotta be honest with you, they're kind of checking off most of the boxes, so we'll kind of go over that as well. Let's start at the very beginning. What's the pertinent information we need to know right off the bat? First off, this game is coming out October 4th. This is not one of those things that's getting pushed off to next year, which I figured it would be. No, it's coming this year. A lot of that probably has to do with the fact that they have been supporting Ghost Recon Wildlands over the past two years, constantly dropping updates and stuff. And one of those things, the most recent thing, is Operation Oracle, featuring John Bernthal as Walker, this other agent, this other ghost, that is going to actually act as a primary antagonist, it seems to you, as a ghost moving forward here in this new game, Breakpoint. So I played the mission the other day, you can go check out that video where you actually can see play through, I did play through it, and you can see him in there, and I was like, oh, why did they get John Bernthal to just do this little mission? Well, actually, it's just a setup, trying to kind of help migrate the players eventually. And there's probably still a lot of people who are playing Recon Wildlands, and they're gonna probably you know, play Division Two over the summer, and then when they get tired of that, move right into this. So Ubisoft kind of getting this synergy, it seems like. But one of the big things here too is we're not gonna be in any you know, non-fictional place anymore. We're gonna be in the completely fantasized world of Aroa, which is this archipelago, this um, islands off of like in the Pacific. I'm not exactly sure where, I love it. I think it's really cool. Lots of different yeah, diversity and biomes and stuff. That's something that I was kind of hoping for a little bit more in Ghost Recon Wildlands 2. Bolivia's got a lot of things that are great, but it seems so kind of boring and sparse a lot of the time. This one feels like much more alive to me, at least from just the little snippets we got with the kind of the sunlight beaming through the trees and, you know, kind of the different areas that they've kind of, you know, hinted at down the line with more snow elements and even like a volcano, but we'll get to that later. So we're playing as a ghost, you know, there can be up to four players once again, but you can play this game completely alone if you want to. The biggest difference with that is that you will not have any AI companions this time. It'll just be yourself. And then you can also have three drones with you, which allow you to kind of do your sync snipe if you want to as well. So that's still a part of the game. You can still do that, but you'll be playing completely solo if you do choose solo. So keep that in mind. So it's still there if you want that. Another huge thing that they're kind of adding to this game is a different healing mechanic, because if you take too much damage now, it seems like your main health or your max health will actually not be able to get back to that level anymore because you might start to, you know, have a lost focus with how you aim or you kind of limp around and you have to kind of get to cover and patch yourself up think kind of far cry 2 where you kind of like where you have to pull like the bullets like out of your arm or whatever kind of wrap yourself up and then they also kind of have these little stim syringes that you can kind of you know stick yourself with to get back to full health as well so that's a little bit different so you got to kind of take care of yourself uh, if you're not going to have any buddies helping you out. But there's probably a chance that there'll be some sort of reviving drone on your team. You know, I, they didn't show anything like that, but I would be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Looks like the bivouac is also a big part of this game now, too. Bivouacs are these kind of like temporary little base things that you can set up. It sounds like it's kind of like the pack that the special forces likes to carry with them, allowing you to set up camp. You can kind of rest, heal your person up. You can even um, kind of eat a meal, I guess, and, you know, that'll give you some boosts. We're seeing that a ton in games now, these open world games where, you know, Final Fantasy XV, Monster Hunter World, like, you want to have these things where you can, like, make your, you know, operative a little bit better, a little bit stronger in some regards, and prepare before you go out. Because that was one thing, apparently, a lot of the special ops people were telling Ubisoft is that, well, when you're out doing these missions it's not always just attack 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 a lot of it is preparation reconnaissance and all that stuff too which obviously they've got the drones back where you're kind of marking targets and kind of the classic ghost recon style of play and that's now assassin's creed as well 
Looks like we're going to be fighting a lot of different types of robots, though, too, in this game, which I'm kind of nervous about. Uh, it's got a little bit of this Terminator vibe where it's like, oh, they were making all this advanced technology on this island with Skeltech, which is the name of this corporation. And then these bad guys, these former ghosts who are now known as the wolves now, are going to be kind of taking these drones and using them for nefarious purposes. And I'm not as big a fan of fighting those, but... They said that the actual AI of the game for the people is going to be a bit different this time. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you're on a team now, if let's just say I play with my friend Joe, he actually, you know, gets spotted or whatever. They're all going to go for him. They're not just going to know where everybody else on the team is immediately. So if I'm, you know, still like in the bushes or I'm sneaking around, they won't necessarily know where I am. So we can use that to our advantage, kind of using that aggro in a different way, which I love. That kind of leads into this next thing, which I'm really excited about natural camouflage laying down in the mud covering yourself up being sneaky and they'll walk right past you and you can kind of watch enemies and how they move and interact oh my goodness i love that they talked about not only doing it in mud but with brush and like leaves you know uh bushes and things but also snow and i'm really interested to see if they have these kind of survival aspects like with the healing and the eating and all of that I don't think you need to eat necessarily to survive like in other games, but like I said, with the bivouac. But if you're wearing a short sleeve t-shirt, does that affect you if you're covered up in snow? I kind of hope it does, because that would be kind of weird if you're like, I'm totally fine, because as a guy from Minnesota, that doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. But I do like the thought of that. And even though you can kind of still see your character, and it's kind of more for you, like it's, you're not completely camouflaged, but as you can probably see here, like you do stick out. But these guys apparently, former ghosts, but they just don't notice you. I think it's still really neat. I love it. But then it kind of leads into this close quarters killing, which I think is great because in the last game, a lot of it was just kind of you knock guys out. There wasn't really anything cool to it. But now you get to pick between two different knives, at least at launch. There's kind of a straight edge, and then there's my personal favorite, which is a crambit, which is the one that kind of you see, you know, our good friend Sam Fisher using this kind of curved blade. And depending on which one of those you like to use or utilize, that's going to be the difference in the actual animations for the kills. And apparently there's a ton of different ones, which is so nice because it was so boring to me, and it is so boring in other games where you just kind of go, you just like do like the stab and it's done. And this might sound very sadistic, but it, it just kind of like, I want something a little different. So it seems like you can kind of get, depending on if you sneak up on them, you will do different kill animations. If you're running and charging at them and they see you, there's kind of like a little fight animation that happens, then you, you still bring them down. It's so cool, and they talk about how it's going to be different, not only in those circumstances, but if you're coming up out of the mud, or if you're dropping down from above, all that stuff, different animations. I love it. That's so great. Also, on top of that now, it's like, in the past, when you drop somebody, especially in Ghost Recon Wildlands, they could either, like, enemies could spot that body, or the body would go away and a gun would just be sitting there. It's like the body would just disappear. Now you can hide bodies. We're talking, you know, Hitman style. So if you want to stay stealthy, you drop these people, you take them out close range with your crambit, hide the body, which is exactly what I love. I love to see that. You can also pick up your teammates too if they're down and you can like carry them over your shoulders and bring them to a safe spot to, you know, revive them in a safer location, which is also really nice because that kind of gives a little more, you know, tactile feature and feeling to the game that wasn't there before, which I really love. One big thing for me, I hated fences in the last game. I know it sounds stupid. You'd have to throw a grenade at like a chain link fence to blow it up and get through it. Or you'd have to run all the way around. It was so dumb. Now you can actually breach fences, which is really cool. It's an item you can acquire in the game. So it's like this torch. So you can kind of, you know, cut a little corner and sneak in. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Just give me a grapple hook. You guys know I love grapple hooks. Give me a grapple hook, please. Oh my gosh, please. I really, really would love that. Looks like there's also different classes in the game, which is kind of interesting. I don't think Ghost Recon ever really needed this, but I'm always kind of a sucker for that sort of thing. Right now, they've only kind of talked about two, the Panther and the Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter, as you could guess, sniper focused. Apparently, they can hold their breath longer. That's now a big factor in the game. It hasn't been in the past, but I guess it is now. And then they can hold up to like three special bullets for like a like, I don't know if they're like explosive rounds or something that you can use. I don't know if it's not a cool down, but they kind of talked about that. And I was like, well, that's interesting. The Panther, on the other hand, all about kind of sneaking in, getting a kill, and then sneaking back out. They have this kind of flashbang smoke grenade thing they can use to kind of, you know, disappear again, cut that line of sight and go back to being 
invisible, quote unquote, or undetected in a way. And that's kind of more up my style. There's another character kind of using a big light machine gun. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like a heavy class, quote unquote, within the game that can, you know, use big heavy weapons because it doesn't sound like the other classes have access to all the guns. You probably get access to a good variety, but not all of them. Like if you're the sharpshooter, I don't think it didn't sound like you were going to be able to use all the big guns that like the other one or two classes might be able to. I'm not sure, but they kind of specified that. We're seeing that in a lot of games now too. Even Anthem did that where they're like, all right, if you're, you know, if you're going to be the Colossus, you get to use like the biggest guns in the game. But if you're an interceptor, you only get to use like the smaller guns. So keep that in mind as well. But that's kind of cool because it allows you to, you know, change up your team. You could all be sharpshooters or you can have a fully diverse group if you're running a full four man. But I don't know which one is going to come out on top being the one that's strongest solo because that's another consideration too, especially if they throw in like some sort of medic class or something like that. I think that's most of the new stuff right there that I wanted to touch on. Those are the big things. They kind of have this new slide mechanic where you can kind of like slide down a hill and that takes stamina and all that jazz. But I'm still waiting to see if they have some sort of grapple hook mechanic or things like that because I think that would be really cool because I'm, I'm just such a sucker for grapple hooks. I know they might not make a lot of sense, but I love them. So I kind of want to just go over this really quickly too. We were kind of throwing together a Ghost Recon Wildlands 2 wish list. Just a few things we were looking to get uh joe really wanted a slide into cover i really wanted a crouch run kind of like the roadie run in gears of war I'm not sure if either of those are in here yet i know their cover system was kind of weird in the last game you kind of have to get close to it and then you kind of hop into it i like hitting a button and jumping in you know to cover and being like yep i'm choosing to do this also i was kind of hoping for like an aoe comms disruptor not would they have neither confirmed nor denied this i've always thought it'd be kind of cool if you could you know disable all the communications in a small like radius for bad guys so that way if they got tipped off they couldn't like you know call in for backup that'd be nice better skill trees i hate the skill trees in ghost recon wildlands they make no sense to me it's like go pick up some medical supplies and then you can like upgrade something it's it's super weird i'm hoping with these specific classes that you get the chance to um, kind of tailor it in a smarter, more <laughs> scrutable way. Because before it was just like, it felt so weird and so just janky and ah, just dumb. It does sound like you'll share progression between this and the PVP, which will be at launch. We didn't really hear a lot about the player versus player, but it's going to be 4v4. So if you want to jump right into that, you can take that progress and bring it into the, you know, regular campaign and vice versa. I'm guessing that's going to go a lot into the skill trees and the guns that you unlock. So that's pretty cool too. Purchasable gun parts, that's another thing in Ghost Recon Wildlands. You had to go find those parts out in the wild, which was kind of dumb to me. I just would rather, you know, make money from contracts and missions than buy them that way. But different locations, that is definitely a check. Uh, you know, seeing all the areas that you can go to and... I talked a little bit briefly about the volcano, which will be the first raid that they will ever have in a Ghost Recon game. That will require four-player co-op. Online co-op, if you don't know anybody, will probably put you into the group. But that was something that they did talk about, and I am really excited about that. Because that means it'll probably be very difficult, and because Ghost Recon isn't technically like a level-based game... They talked about, like, if you shoot a person in the head in this game, they will go down. Like, there are certain classes in this game they were talking about, specifically, like, the heavy. This dude who's, like, fully armored, big minigun, but you can see his face, and they're like, you have to shoot him, like, in the head. Like, that's the best way to take him out. And I was like, oh, yes. Obviously, the robots, like, the tanks and the drones and stuff will probably be kind of more bullet spongy. But I'm hoping for a really tough tactical you know raid as it were that isn't level based which i think is really cool and i don't think we've seen a lot of because those are typically things that started off in mmorpgs and you had to be certain levels and all that jazz but for this time it doesn't seem that way which is really stinking cool full camo that's another thing that they just added back to ghost recon wildlands where you could actually like a full tactical camo like they had in future soldier what do i mean by that i mean that like you sit in like this kind of almost invisible aura when you're crouched long enough and it didn't always fully work because like the enemies would spot you and you could still see your character i always just love that sort of thing so i'm hoping that's like an end game thing i think that would be really cool because then i really feel like a ghost because in ghost recon i'm either doing one of two things i am either being a ghost i'm personifying a ghost or i'm making ghosts that's right i'm dropping people oh my gosh i love it i'm really excited as you can tell 
But yeah, I just want to kind of go over that really quickly with you guys because this is something I'm really excited about. I hope you enjoyed this sort of thing, and if you guys want to see more of it, please let me know. You know, there are certain games like this that it, it hasn't been years and years and years, but I've just I'm still playing Ghost Recon Wildlands just because of the updates between the Sam Fisher one, the Predator one, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. So if you like it, let me know. Just, you know, leave us a like and subscribe. That really does help us a ton. But just sharing us with some friends, that's good too. We have a Patreon. We have a Spreadshirt. You can support us there as well. And if you want to hear more about this sort of thing, we're going to be talking about it on the podcast this week. So tune in for that because Joe and I will probably be getting into it. I hope. I hope we'll talk about it a lot. Either way, I'm going to be talking about it. So it'll be good. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend or week or whenever you're watching this. And just remember to adapt and overcome.